Labor Day is the traditional kickoff of the campaign season, so get ready for a flurry of activity. There's a debate on Wednesday, and tomorrow, the leading Republican presidential candidates take center stage at a South Carolina forum hosted by the state's powerful Senator Jim DeMint. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney was planning to skip the event, but he changed his mind when Rick Perry surged ahead in the polls. Senator DeMint, of course, is a major force behind the Tea Party movement. His endorsement is one of the most prized of 2012. And he joins me now from Clemson, South Carolina. Senator, thank you for being with us. Christian, it's great to be with you. And uh, we're really looking forward to this forum because it's set up in a very different style. And instead of the typical debate with uh, lots of candidates on stage, each candidate gets to spend uh, 21 minutes on the stage by themselves to define themselves in their own terms. So I think uh, folks all over the country will find it very interesting. Well, let me ask you then for your view on the latest entrant into the race, and that is Texas Governor Rick Perry. Earlier this summer, you said you didn't know enough about him. Now, can you tell me your views since he's been in the race and there's been a lot said by him over the last couple of weeks? Well, I'm excited about our field. I think the more people find out about the Republican candidates, the, the more strengths they see. I think that's why a lot of people have hesitated to jump in. And, and it's good to give people a choice. So I'm, I'm glad Governor Perry jumped in, uh, but I'm going to withhold any uh, endorsement or support to, for, for several months. It's really important to me to see how these candidates respond to the big issues of the day. I want to see not only their policy proposals, particularly as it relates to jobs, but I want to see how they respond to recommendations from this super committee and what Congress is doing towards uh, balancing the budget and other issues like that. That's going to play out over the next couple of months, but this forum is going to be very helpful to me and others because instead of forcing them to answer my questions, we are going to encourage them to define the issues on their own terms. Uh, right. This will give us a little bit deeper understanding of how they view the, the Constitution and their role as president. Well, Senator, I know you want to withhold an endorsement, but I do want to press you because Rick Perry is the front runner at the moment. And I want to know, and particularly he's quite beloved of the Tea Party movement, of which you are a major force. What can you tell me, how do you feel, for instance, about his endorsement of Al Gore back in 1988, of his praising Hillary Clinton's and the Clinton health care plan? What do you feel about those stances? Well, I want to find out more about him, obviously, but we know uh, people change. Reagan was a Democrat, and uh, I want to look at what uh, the governor has done uh, as governor of Texas, just as I'm going to try to dig into a, a lot of the issues, past, present, and future policy proposals of all the candidates, but I want to give them all a little room to change. I know uh, I've changed some positions I had 10 years ago because the country's in a very different situation. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to listen and look and do my, do my homework, and I'm not counting any of them out at this point. What about Governor Perry's stance on Social Security? In his book, which is now being poured over, as you can imagine, he, he basically calls Social Security like a bad disease and a big failure. Do you think that is going to haunt him on the campaign trail? Well, I want to hear him explain his views on that. I, I've uh, developed a lot of reform proposals myself and been accused of trying to destroy Social Security when the whole point was to try to save it. I think most people know that uh, Social Security is bankrupt, and I, I believe the governor probably feels as I do. We need to keep our promises to seniors and offer better choices to younger workers. But I want to hear him explain these things on his own terms, and so I think uh, we'll learn a lot about that and other issues on Monday. Well, just quickly to wrap up, uh, uh, Governor Perry, do you like what you've seen so far? Is he the presumed front runner for you? Well, there are things, there are things I certainly like, just so, like I do with all the candidates. So like I said before, I, I see some good things, some strengths in a lot of the candidates. And um, the ones we're having, we've got the top runners uh, or the top tier uh, there on Monday. Uh, so I'm, I'm not making any uh, real judgments, but there are things I like about all of them. Now, you're being very cagey, Senator. Let me ask you about Governor Mitt Romney, who did earn your endorsement the last time he ran. He's having a lot of trouble with the Tea Party right now. He's decided to come to your forum where he was going to skip it. Where do you think he needs to go in order to get Tea Party support? Do you think he'll get it? 
Well, uh, tea party is being thrown around a lot today, but uh, uh, for everyone who calls them a tea party, uh, themselves a tea party member, there are hundreds of people who have the same concerns about our spending and our debt. We know over 70% of Americans want to balance the budget. So it's not one small group. What it is is just uh, thousands of groups around the country who are concerned about the future of our country. I think it's one of the best things that's happened to our country and to politics because there's a broad cross-section of Americans involved in citizen activism today. And some are called Tea Party, some are not. Uh, but all the candidates are going to have to appeal to this new grassroots movement. And uh, that's really what I'm looking for. I'm not trying to anoint any candidate. I'm looking at which one really catches the attention and inspires the average American who has gotten involved with, with politics and the political process. Mm -hmm. So that's key to me. If any of these candidates are go going to have to appeal to those Americans who are unified, particularly around fiscal issues. Talking about fiscal issues, uh, President Obama is going to be making a big speech towards a joint session of Congress this week. Do you expect him to make any proposals that will win Republican support? Well, I'm frankly very tired of speeches. I, I don't want to be disrespectful to the president, but what, what I want to see is something in writing and that the Congressional Budget Office tells us what it's going to cost so that we can not only read it ourselves, but the American people can read it. Uh, speeches we found are, are not very similar to the actual legislation. So I'm pretty frustrated with the, the speech idea and frankly the things that have been leaking out of the White House, none of them are like what I've been hearing from businesses all over the country. You know, extending unemployment, cutting payroll taxes, um, uh, offering tax credits when you hire someone. I haven't heard one business say things like this. What they want is some certainty. They want the regulators off their back. They want the National Labor Relations Board to stop pushing the union agenda and try to help companies that create jobs. So I don't think the president is going to come out with things that are really going to help, uh, create jobs. I'm afraid it's just pandering to his base. But if he'll send a written proposal, I'll give it every uh, uh, a chance. Uh, and, but I'm not interested in his speech right now. And, and as the Congressional Budget Office said, we, we can't score a speech. We can't tell him what it's going to cost or what it's going to do. Senator DeMint, thank you so much for joining us from South Carolina.